Hello everyone, my name is Taylor, and today I will be explaining how you can develop relevant keywords associated with your research topic in order to improve your search strategy for scholarly sources. I will be providing an overview of what keywords are, as well as a five-step process that will enable you to generate your own keywords. All right, let's get started. Anyone who has used Google has searched with keywords. Keywords are the core of your research questions. A keyword offers a flexible and convenient way to start searching. For example, instead of searching an entire question like, what's the weather like today in Seattle? You might break it down into two or three words that are meaningful like Seattle weather. This process of generating keywords will help prepare you for effective searching as a concept can often be expressed with numerous different terms. Avoiding this step in the research process can often lead to frustration later if you are unable to find sources for your research topic. So do yourself a favor and spend a little extra time now. I guarantee you, you'll have an easier time finding sources if you do. There are many ways to generate keywords. However, I think it's beneficial to break it down into five steps. I'm going to be going over these steps individually, but if you ever need to reference them together, this is where you can find them. They are 1. Develop a well-formed research question. 2. Extract core concepts from this research question. 3. Brainstorm a list of alternative terms or phrases for each concept or term. 4. Organize the list of terms and phrases by creating a hierarchy indicating broader and narrower terms for each core term. Five, identify which terms you would combine to conduct the search. All right, let's get started with step one. Step one is start with a well-formed research question. Luckily, I have an example research question prepared. The question is, how have various stakeholders responded to Seattle's initiatives and approaches to creating and preserving green spaces as the city has grown in population. If you feel like you need help developing your research question, please follow up with Michelle Lee's recording on constructing a well-thought research question. Okay, so now that you have a well-formed research question, what's next? I know you may be tempted to type this question into a search bar, but that will not yield results in academic databases. You need to see what the core concepts are in your question first. That brings us to our second step, extract the core concepts. In step two, we're extracting the core concepts. Taking it a step further, let's look at the research question again. This time I singled out some words that stood out to me. When I think about this question, I believe we wanna find information about green spaces in Seattle, but we probably want to know some other information as well. We want to know about the stakeholders' response to green spaces and the effects on an ever-growing population. So I selected stakeholders, Seattle, green spaces, and growth in population as our core concepts. So we're ready to search, right? Well, not yet. The term stakeholders is probably too broad a term to actually yield results in an academic database. This means I need to expand my terms which is what we'll do in step three, create a list of terms. But first, some helpful tips to help you create that list. Searching in library databases can sometimes be intimidating. Have you ever tried searching something that you thought was easy and straightforward and gotten completely irrelevant results? If you're having trouble thinking of key concepts on your topic, but you have at least one academic article that you think is very relevant, Try looking at the library subject headings. Library subject headings are index terms that describe what your article is about. This will give you a good idea of how it's categorized in this database. It usually is located below the title and author information. Please note this example on the slide. This is another way to brainstorm key concepts if you find yourself coming up with the same terms over and over. Great, onward to step three.
Step three is create a list of alternative terms or phrases for each core concept. Those concepts are green space, Seattle, stakeholders, and growth and population. I have already created a list of terms. Some of the related terms to this topic may be parks, community gardens, Washington, politicians, and city growth. When you develop a list of related terms for your key concepts, it is important to note that the list can be as long or as short as you want. This is just a method to get you to find other ways to describe your concepts. For example, the library database may not contain a lot of information on growth and population as it's written, but may have a lot of information under urban growth or city growth. After you have a list of terms for each key concept, we're going to be organizing those terms in step four and placing them into categories like broader terms and narrower terms. For example, Washington will be a general reference to Seattle, but the Pacific Northwest will be an even broader term to consider. Now we're going to do a quick activity alongside step four. Using the key concepts we identified in step two, those key concepts again are green spaces, stakeholders, Seattle, and growth and population and the list of terms we generated in step three, those terms will be attached to the slide in the comments for your quick reference. We are going to organize them into broader concepts, narrower concepts, and synonyms. You can do this with a piece of paper and pen or just in your head. On the next slide, you will see how the terms are organized and in turn be presented with a more holistic view of the research topic. Now it's time to check your answers or think about what you see here. One thing you may notice immediately is that some of the sections are still blank. There are times where you may not be able to find the exact related term, broader term, or narrower term that fits with your key concepts. However, you are using these categories to think broadly about your topic and expand your search. For the search process, you want to have some terms to work with, but don't panic if you cannot fill out every section of a keyword chart like this one. Finally, we arrive at step five, stringing your terms together and starting to search. To do this, you would select a few terms that you've created and combine them to begin the search process. It may or may not be necessary for you to pick one term from each of the key concept category that you created. However, now you have more than one term to draw from. If you don't get results from your original search, try some of the broader, related, or narrower terms that you created. Also, don't be afraid to keep it simple. If you find that searching with two or three terms gives you the best results, that's perfectly okay, and it's all a part of the searching process. One student might find for this particular subject that they find community garden, Seattle, and urban development gives them the best terms to get started. If you ever find yourself stuck or coming up with no results, consider revising your list of keywords. Often students will find an article with a lot of valuable information, but they need three or four scholarly articles for their assignment. Look at the abstract or subject headings of the article that you found and see if you can find any words that the authors are using that you did not include in your search. Also, as you search, you may find that one database offers different results compared to another. Subtle changes in the language that you use can often bring you very different results, depending on the database. As you learn more about your topic through searching and reading articles, you may find that you can refine and adjust your research question even further. All right, so it's time to start your search and good luck. Thank you for your time and I hope this helps you through your research process.